Last time we made a simple text box, but today we're gonna upgrade it with speech sound effects and a bunch of other stuff to make it a complete text box. Let's do it. Let's go do. Since this is a continuation on the last video, I recommend you watch that one first. But if you don't wanna, that's okay, cause you can learn a lot from this one regardless. We're gonna implement five things to our text box. Speech sound effects, text box tail, next line indicator, stopping the player from moving, and the pop-up animation. So let's get on with the juiciest one, speech sound effects. In our dialog manager, we're gonna add a variable called sfx of type audio stream. Then we're gonna modify the start dialog function to take a third parameter called speech sfx also of type audio stream. Before calling show textbox function, we're gonna assign the speech sfx to our sfx variable. Then in the show textbox function, on the line textbox.displayText, we're also gonna pass our sfx as a second parameter. Now let's head over to the textbox scene and we have to add an audio stream player node. In the textbox script, let's get the audio stream player and save it into a audio player variable. Then in the display text function, we have to add another parameter called speech sfx of type audio stream. And let's assign this speech sfx to our audio player stream variable. Now we want to play this audio every time a letter is typed out into the text box, so let's go down to our display letter function. And in the match where we check which character is being typed out, we want to play the audio only in the default case. So we will create a new audio player by duplicating our current audio player. We're gonna randomize its pitch scale by a random number from minus 0.1 to 0.1. And to make the speech more interesting, we're gonna check if our current letter is a vowel, and if it is, we're gonna increase our pitch scale by another 0.2. Now we're gonna add our new audio player into the scene by calling get tree dot root dot add child new audio player. We're gonna play it by calling new audio player dot play. We're gonna await for it to be finished, and then we're gonna destroy it. Now when you start the dialog, you also have to pass in the sound you're gonna use for the speech. Here in my test guy script, I preloaded the speech sound up at the top, and you wanna use a short sound like this one. Then when I'm calling dialog manager.start dialog, I'm also passing speech sound as the third parameter. And that's all we need for the audio, now let's hop on into the text box tail. I just drew this really simple tail in A-Sprite, making sure it fits into my current text box texture. Since our text box already centers itself over the speaker, it's actually pretty easy to add the tail, it just needs to be in the center of the node. So we'll add a new control node under 9 patch rect, and we'll set its anchor by clicking on this button up here, and choosing the center bottom option. Then we'll add a sprite 2D node as a child of the control node, and we'll drag our tail sprite into its texture. Now we just need to position it right in the middle of our text box, and as the text box changes width, the tail is going to stay in the middle. Creating the next line indicator is similarly very easy. All we need to do is add another control node under our 9 patch rect, and we have to add an animated sprite under it. We're gonna call it next indicator. In the inspector, expand animation, sprite frames, and create new sprite frames. Here I'm just gonna load my indicator animation, which is a 4 frame animation of this little indicator spinning, it's very simple. I set the speed to 8 FPS, and enable the animation by clicking on this arrow icon. Now we wanna place our indicator in the bottom right of the text box, so just like before, we can select the control, and set its anchor to bottom right this time. Then to position the indicator, we have to resize the control all the way down, and now we can select our animated sprite and move it a little bit to adjust its position. We don't want the indicator to be visible all the time, but only when the text box finishes displaying text. So let's open up the text box script and get the indicator into the next indicator variable. Go down to the display letter function, where we emit the finished displaying signal, and under it we can call next indicator dot visible equals true. And by default we wanna hide it by going into the inspector and under visibility checking visible off. To stop the player from moving during the dialog, we can do this quick and easy by just going to the player's physics process or process function wherever you process his movements and checking if dialog manager dot is dialog active is true, in which case you just wanna return out of it. So you never get to the code that moves the player during the dialog. Making a pop-up animation is really simple, but it takes the text box to the next level. All we have to do is go to our text box script, 
and in the ready function set the initial scale to vector2.0. Then at the end of the display text function we're gonna set pivot offset to vector2 with x being size.x over 2 and y being size.y. This will make the text box scale up from the bottom center. And we're gonna scale it up using tweens. So we'll create a new tween by calling var tween equals get3.create tween. We're gonna call tween.tween property. The object is going to be self. The property is going to be scale in quotation marks. The final value is going to be vector2 with x and y being 1. And duration is going to be really short, like 0.15 seconds. We're also gonna set a transition by immediately calling dot set trans after it with the value tween dot trans back so it bounces back a little bit. And with that all done, we have our text box looking like this. Check out the playlist on screen for more short form Godot tutorials and thank you for watching.